friends, and welcome to our April 15th Good Friday service, and what a good Friday it is, this 9.30 a.m. Today we are going to have a very special service, similar to what we do for Christmas Eve. We're going to tell a story using the scripture and some hymns. I will share a five-minute talk at the end, as well as some explanatory comments, and then we will take communion together. And that will be the close of our service with the doxology, the trifold amen, and the benediction. It's, it's going to be a wonderful service. Good Friday is the story of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How he was crucified on the cross, the innocent, the righteous man, as the centurion calls him, condemned to die. But it's also the story of, of we, of us. It's our story as well. St. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Anyone who is a believer in Jesus Christ finds that they are hid in Christ. We are with him there. When we are baptized, the Bible says we are baptized into his death. We are baptized into his cross. And in this story of the cross and of Jesus, there are two other people that we want to focus on today and two other minor persons that we will, well, minor (laughs) persons that we will mentioned. There's also the story of Judas and of St. Peter. And we see here true repentance and what it means to be a follower of Jesus, to fail, receive forgiveness, and to strengthen ourselves and others as well through the story of our faith. So our first reading of scripture is going to introduce to us the three principal names I will be mentioning throughout this service time, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he who is very God and very man. Also Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, and Simon Peter, who I think many of us we can identify with in his humility, in his failure, and in his strength. Hopefully we do not identify with the betrayer, but we will let the Lord and the Spirit convict us and guide us where we need to repent through this service. How about I pray? Ask the Lord to be with us today, and then we will read this scripture. I have some selections from the Gospel of Luke primarily and one from the Gospel of Matthew. O Lord, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as well as have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We praise you, Lord, and we call on your name. We invite you here, Jesus, the Trinity of God, our three in one God, the Trinity. We ask you, Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, to abide with thy saints this Good Friday morning, we pray. Be with us as we read the Gospel and hear the story of Jesus. Tell it over and over again to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Our reading begins in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 1 to 6, 14 to 23, and 31 to 34. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. The leaders of the Jews, they wanted to hold on to their power. They were fearful of Jesus' power that the people followed him, so they sought to put him to death. Then Satan, the evil one, entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of a crowd. Filthy lucre, desire of money. This is clearly Judas' weakness and his sin. We join our Lord at the Last Supper. 
And when the hour came, he, meaning Jesus, reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. Treacherous. The traitor is in the midst of the church. He's at the very table of the Lord's supper, the wheat and the tares. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another which of them it could be who was going to do this. At some point in the supper, we don't quite know when, our Lord turns to Simon Peter. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. When you sift wheat, you bumble it around, you, you move it. It is like a, if, if you were to be in a sifter, it'd be torturous. So we can understand that the devil wanted to torture P Peter, to torment him, to get his hands on him as he got his hands on Judas. What does our Lord say though? But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times that you know me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Three people, our Lord and Savior. He knows what is to come. He knows his death. He knows the end of the story. He knows what's happening. He knows who the betrayer is. He knows Peter is going to deny. God knows the story before it is written because all my steps, says the scripture in Psalm 139, is written in thy book. And yet he extends repentance to Judas. He says, woe to you, Judas. Please turn back from what you are doing. And he says to Peter, don't betray. But I know that you will. There's a word of peace there, protection. Jesus is praying for St. Peter even in his betrayal. Would you join me in this time for a moment of quiet reflection as we prepare ourselves, we contemplate the story that is about to unfold and we ready ourselves to hear the words of the gospel after 30 seconds or so of silence. And then after that next reading, we will have our first hymn. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood, falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. 
we see our Lord, he was concerned for his apostles. He knew the cross that was going to come. And in his human form, as, as we, if you, if you know you're about to enter a painful experience, you brace yourself with your body. Because we're human, it involuntarily reacts. We have a natural reaction of fear. We have a, many natural reactions to so our Lord's body. His human flesh, it was reacting to the cross and what was to come. And the grief of what his apostles were going to go through that night and in the future. Because many of them, according to tradition, they didn't have the easiest time after our Lord died and rose again from the dead. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd. And the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? In the Gospel according to St. Matthew, our Lord calls Judas in this place, friend, friend. He still asks Judas to repent by pointing out his evil deed, that he would turn from it and choose the right way. And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. In the Gospel of John, we know that this person is St. Peter, actually. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Mercy. That's why Jesus came, not judgment. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. We see our Lord. And those two names we mentioned, Judas and St. Peter, the story unfolds. But courage, courage, Jesus leads on, willing to give his life. It seems like he's reacting, but as you actually read the gospel, you realize he is in control without being in control. He is the center of the story. They are moving around him. They don't know what to do with him. They're struggling with him. And in our own lives, as Simon Peter wrestled with the identity of Christ, his Lord and his Master, who he wanted to defend, and Judas wrestled with the identity of Christ and surrendering Jesus to his enemies, an innocent man, we too are called to wrestle with what Jesus did for us on that cross. Would you join with me as we sing our first hymn? Sacred head for such a warm man. 
when Christ the mighty Maker died for man the creature's sin. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. We now continue the story, focusing on a man of repentance, unlike Judas, a man who had tears of remorse that led to salvation and life, that did not lead to death. Shall we read together? And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. This is all the people at the high priest's house. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly, this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. It is Simon's Peter story of how he came to know the forgiveness and grace of God. That no matter how great our mistakes, that even should it be the night of the betrayal of the Son of God, and our hands are weak through fear and we fail, his love covers even that sin. What a marvelous story St. Peter has. And woe to us if we think we would do any better than him. Woe to us if we think we can do better than the tears of St. Peter for the sins he has done. Repentance is the way to the cross and nothing else. How about you join with me as we sing our next hymn, a hymn of the grace of the Lord.
We in the previous section looked at St. Peter, and now we are going to follow our Lord as he reveals the central truth, the mystery, that this whole story revolves around, that he is very God and very man, the Trinity of God, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they said many other things against him, blaspheming him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away to their council, and they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. That is, in the midst of the throne, at the right hand of the Father. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? Which, of course, that's exactly what he just said. But their hearts were closed to receive it. And he said to them, You say that I am. In other words, your own mouths condemn you. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. Your own mouth condemns you. Our soul knows the truth of the words we say. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was misleading the people, and after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him, neither did Herod for he sent him back to us. We skipped that portion. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. We recall the words of Christ, Do you come against me as if I was? A robber, as if I was a bandit, a killer, a thief. See who they prefer instead of the Son of God. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, for whom they asked. But he delivered Jesus over to their will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. We see here the chief priests moved by fear, fear of losing their power, trying to kill an innocent man themselves being robbers. We see Pilate weak, fearful to do the right thing, the thing he clearly believes to be right. Many of us can empathize when we are charged with doing something good, but we don't have the mustard to follow through, to complete the task. Ironically, the lamb who is condemned to death is the strongest of all. He is the most unwavering. He is the most firm. He is the most unafraid. Truly Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. And though the tempest and the storm rages, He is the master of the sea. How would you join with me as we sing our next hymn,
We followed St. Peter for a bit. We saw his repentance. We saw our unwavering Lord and Savior at the judgment seat, though being judged. Truly, he was the judge. And we now follow the man who, though he wept with tears, had no place for repentance. That is Judas Iscariot. There is a remorse that leads to repentance. It leads us to the cross. You notice St. Peter, he followed after Jesus. But there is a remorse that leads us away from God and to death, to the evil one. Do not confuse the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the tears it brings for the bad feelings of destruction, of remorse, and of death. How about we read here in Matthew 27, verses 3 to 5, before we return to the Gospel of Luke. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. What should Judas have done differently? He should have gone to see Jesus, the one who called him friend in the garden. He should have gone to his Lord and his master. If he was truly sorry and didn't just feel bad, he should have gone to the Lord of life and asked for mercy and grace. If there was turning back at this point, for his hands would be stained with the blood of God. Let us take a look here now at the Gospel of St. Luke. Verse 32 of chapter 23. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him, meaning Jesus. And the criminals, one on his right and one on his left, see they put him in the middle of criminals to try and convince everyone that he was a criminal, that he wasn't an innocent man. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, and coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Truly, we see here Jesus. There is a man there, a thief on the cross. And he says to Christ a prayer, a simple one. O oh Lord, remember me. I'm sorry for what I did. I deserve to be here, but you don't deserve to be here, Jesus. I've done wrong, but you haven't done wrong. And Jesus, I, I, I have nothing, but I just ask for your mercy. And Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Every heart that comes to him, Jesus will never turn away. He is never too busy for a lost soul. Truly, what a friend we have in Jesus. i
Judas and the remorse that leads to death, he hanged himself. And we look to Simon Peter, the remorse that leads to repentance, the tears that lead to life that come from looking at the Lord, looking at the face of Jesus for help in our time of need. We saw the robber who went free and the innocent man, Jesus, who robbed no one who was condemned to death. In Barabbas, we can see ourselves sinners, and the innocent Lamb of God died in our place, the righteous man. Though he was crucified among sinners, surrounded by sin, bearing the burden of sin on the cross, the plea of the sinner that will always reach the ear of Jesus Christ is, Remember me. Think about me, Lord Jesus. I miss you. I love you. And I am sorry for my sins. It's when we see the cross. It's when we can see him hanging there. It's when we can see through faith that Jesus gave his life for us, that we are children of God, and we have a promise to be with him forever in paradise. Anything else a Christian will not make. It's a vision of the cross, a forgiveness of sin, of the price he paid. It's being touched by the story of Jesus, not various entertainments or flashy performances, but the message itself, that your soul needs the blood of God to be washed clean, that you are a guilty, innocent sinner. I am a guilty, innocent sinner. We, sorry, we are all guilty and not innocent sinners. And we need the innocent Jesus Christ to wash us clean of all our sins. How about we read our last section here before we then take communion. It was now about the sixth hour, that is noon, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, that is 3 p.m., while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two because the light of the world was crucified. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent or a righteous man. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. This is a metaphorical, perhaps, with, with grief, overwhelmed, confused. What, what's going on? The righteous man died. It's a sad tale. And all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. I think we can presume St. Peter is among all of the acquaintances of the Lord, watching from a distance. It's a sight of the cross that turns a sinner into the saint. It's the sight of what Jesus has done. It's appreciating the Lamb of God. It's knowing the depth of sin, but moving from the depth of sin to knowing the depth of mercy, and truly how deep the Father's love is for us, that He would give His only Son to make a wretch 
his treasure. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Jesus, my friends, he died for me. He died for you. He died for sinners to bring us to God. Communion is for believers. Those who have seen the cross have wept for their sin in their hearts, in their souls. They've, they've wept. They have the tears of repentance. Communion is for those whose hearts are right with God. So let's take a moment and let's make peace with God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give us some time to get our communion emblems ready. And then I'm going to ask us to examine our hearts. And then we'll pray and take communion. But first, this quiet time to prepare your communion and reflect and bring to your mind anything you think you want to pray and confess to God at this time. I hope we use that quiet time as we got our stuff to think about our relationship with God. We are presented now with the seriousness of communion. We break the bread because the body of the Lord was broken, as we saw on the cross. And the blood was poured out from the broken body. We break the bread, and then we take the cup. His body was broken, then the blood poured out. By the cross, by the price he paid, we are saved. Easter is a beautiful story, but it's not Sunday yet. Yes, there's a good ending because where he goes, there we will be also. If there wasn't Easter, we'd, we'd just go into the grave. We wouldn't go to heaven. But because there's Easter, the cross is salvation. It is the sign through which we conquer. For this is the victory that has overcome the world, your faith. And so this morning, I want to read to us the words of the apostle that call us to examine ourselves and to stir up our faith towards God. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning, appreciating, the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Communion is a sacred time. So let us ask God to wash us clean of every sin. O Lord, Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be whiter than snow. Your sins have made a separation between you and your God. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, ye double-minded. O Lord, our sins which were as scarlet, may they be white as snow. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his commandments, which he set before us. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But yet through Jesus Christ and through the cross, you say that I have a spirit in me crying, Abba, Father, and that I am a child of the living God. Lord Jesus, we ask that you wash us of all our sins. You forgive us and cleanse us. Make us pure and spotless without any stain. May we discern that we are eating and drinking the body and the blood of the Lord this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How about you take your communion wafer in your hand and you join with me. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, thank you, Lord, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you partake of the bread this morning? In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, Thank you, Lord, for this cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you partake of this cup with me this morning for the forgiveness of our sins? Yes. 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Until he comes, when we read Jesus in Luke's gospel there earlier, talking about the Last Supper, he said he was going to drink the fruit of the vine anew with us, again in his Father's kingdom. We're going to be with him. He knew the cross was coming, but he knew Easter was coming too. And he knew that one day he would return for his saints. He would resurrect the dead, and that all who died in Christ would live in Christ, and that we would be with him to rule and reign, to serve as priests in his kingdom forever. That is the gospel story, that Jesus came, he was born of the Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit, that he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, that he descended into hell, into the grave, and that he rose again from the dead on the third day he ascended into heaven. And then now he sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Communion is the Christian story. It is our gospel faith. It is the cross. So I exhort us always, as often as we take communion, to do it with reverence and a desire to praise God and to renew, Lord, I to thee my vows renew, that we would renew to Jesus our commitment, our faith, and our promise to serve him better every day. Would you join me, friends, as we close our Good Friday service by singing the doxology and then the trifold amen. And then we may go in peace. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Trifold Amen. 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 May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, my friends. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. We will see you Sunday morning. Take care and God bless.
to drown.